my name is Sinisile Lamini. Um, today we're going to do regression and correlation analysis, um, which is basically about looking at the relationship between two variables. And in the case of this course, we're usually looking at a linear relationship, which means that we're looking at an independent variable and a dependent variable. So the independent variable determines what the dependent variable will be in terms of like the numerical value. Um, the equation for the linear one is this one, which I don't know, some, some may know as y is equal to mx plus c, um, which is basically the same thing where m is the gradient. In our case, our beta one is the gradient and our c is the intercept. In this case, our beta naught is the intercept. And what we have here at the end is what we call random noise. So it's like a deviation of how much the actual, the actual equation differs from what you have determined. Um, so this gives you the determination of a certain point on the line that you have drawn. So this is your predicted y value. Um, and then the random noise that you get from that, so what you predict what is, what is the actual value minus what you predict will give you the, the random noise in this case. And the distribution of that is normal with the mean of zero and variance. So once you've calculated our beta one, um, you're going to need to test whether it's significant. What this means is that um, does it, does, does, is there a relationship between y and x? Because if beta one is zero, then x will automatically be zero, which means there won't be a relationship between the two. And our beta one will tell us what the relationship is between x and y. So let's say our beta one was two. So for every increase in two of units of y will be accounted for by one unit of x. Um, so when we test the significance, we do it using the hypothesis testing. In our first step, like we use the normal steps that we use for hypothesis testing, in the first step, our h naught is going to be beta 1 is equal to 0. If this was proven to be true, it would mean that the slope is insignificant, which is what I was talking about in the first case where if it's 0, then our x will automatically be 0. And then our h1 will say that beta 1 <coughs> is not equal to zero, which means that it's significant, which means there is a relationship between x and y. Now, for our test statistic, we have this equation, which is t is equal to beta one minus zero because our beta one here from the population is zero, and then over sb1. For sb1, the, the equation that we use is this one over here, and in this course, we are always given SE. We don't have to calculate it, although there is an equation to calculate it. And the best denominator for this is this one because it's simple. Um, we use N minus 1 and we use SX squared. SX squared is from your calculator. You can get that from your calculator. So when you get your question and you punch in your variables, um, you get your X variables and your Y variables. And then you're going to have to go to... Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, can I just check? Okay, so you're going to go to stat mode and then you're going to choose 2, which is A plus BX. And then you're going to get two columns, an X and a Y column. And then you're going to punch in your data. So once you punch in your data, um, you're going to get, you're going to save your data and then you're going to say shift and go to stat. So when you go to 5 for your regression, A represents this our B1, and then our B represents this. That's where you get from your regression. And then when it comes to what we're doing now here, where you want your SX squared, you're gonna do what you've always done when you're looking for the S, which is go go to your VAR, sorry. We're, yes, you're gonna go to your VAR, and there you're gonna get SX, but you're also gonna get an SY. In this case, we're looking for SX, and then you're gonna square that. So, that is your test statistic, but you're not calculating it here. I was just explaining everything. And then now your rejection region. As you can see here, we said beta naught is not equal to zero, which means that it's a two-sided test, which means our rejection region will be on one side or the other. Um, and that's why here we use alpha over two. 
and the degrees of freedom in regression analysis is always n minus 2. So we reject H naught if T observed is greater than n minus 2 of alpha over 2, which is this part, or if T observed is less than negative T n minus 2 alpha over 2, which is this side. So if what we calculate in step 4 either falls in here or in here, we reject H naught. Um, so here you calculate our T observed. You can either get a positive value or a negative value. If you get a positive value, your p-value calculation, remember here we said, alpha, we said alpha over 2, which means our p-value will be multiplied by 2. So if you get a positive, it's going to be t is greater than t observed because now we're flipping around this, this sign. Now t is the greater one and not t observed. But if you get a negative, then we're using this one and you're going to say 2 times p, where t is now less than t observed. Which is, now, which is going to be negative in this case. And then when you come to your conclusion, remember we said H0 means that the slope is insignificant, and H1 means that it's significant. So if we reject H0, it means that our slope is significant because we're supporting H1. But if we fail to reject H0, it would, it would suggest that our slope is insignificant. Um, so now we're going to move on to the confidence interval and the prediction interval of the mean of y. Um, our confidence interval, this is the equation for it, and our prediction interval is basically the same thing, but you add a 1 in this space. So here you'd say plus 1. Um, you get this. So if they say they want the, the, the prediction interval of y and they tell you what our x0 is. You're going to use our x0 to calculate our predicted y, which is our y hat. And that's how you get that. This, um, they give you the level of significance, so that's how you're going to get alpha over 2. And our degrees of freedom are always n minus 2, so you're going to be able to calculate that using the t-table. Our se is always given, so you just punch that in and you square it. If it's already squared, you put it in as it is. Um, and then here, 1 over n, you know what your sample size is. And then here, let's say they had said 60 when you were calculating your y hat. So you're going to put in 60 over there. And then you're going to say minus x bar. Our x bar you also get from the calculation, like you do in every other chapter, which is the fourth option if you're using a Casio, and that's the var option. And make sure that it's x bar, not y bar, because now you have two variables, which means that you will have a, a mean of y and a mean of x, but now you're looking for x bar. And then our xx squared, you get the same way you got it in this case. Um, and then here, it's basically the same equation. Everything is the same, except you just add a 1. Just take note whether they're asking for the, con the confidence interval or the prediction interval. Um, and then now we're going to move on to our correlation coefficient, which is a Greek sign rho. It looks like a p, but it's not a p, it's a rho. And then the, the Greek sign is a representation of what's in the population. This is also the correlation coefficient, but it's from the sample and not the population. This is the correlation coefficient of determination, okay, which is R squared. Um, and then we can test the correlation is about how much X is relates to y because here we talked about the fact that does it relate to y and then now we're talking about how much it relates so um the way you test that is if it's closer to negative one then it's a negative it's a ne strong negative the closer it is strong negative which would be that and the closer it is to one which is positive it means it's a strong positive relationship and it's we're talking we're still talking about linear relationships so that would be that. And then what you'd get if it's closer to zero, which would be in the middle here somewhere, it would mean that it's not it's not as it's not a linear relationship. So it would be something like that. So now we need to test how significant what we're talking about here, which is the correlation. We need to talk about how significant it is. So our hypothesis is going to be h naught is equal rho is equal to zero, which remember here we said it's 
beta 1 is insignificant, but now we're talking about rho, but our conclusion will still be the same. It will be insignificant if it's equal to 0, which would mean that um, whatever we concluded here is not significant. And then here, it's significant if it's not equal to 0. So since it's not equal to zero, it's a two-sided test. We're going to have this side and that side. And then the test, test, test statistic for this one is t is equal to r um, root n minus 2 over root 1 minus r squared. And it's distributed t n minus 2. And then when you carry on from here, from the third step, everything is going to look similar to this. But you just need to take note of the fact that in this case, you're testing for rho and you're not testing for beta 1.